All right, everybody, so we are officially back home. We're gonna go ahead and get these fish cleaned up. So let's get it started. Let's clean them up real good, get them ready, because tonight we're making fish tacos. Yes, let's do it. Hey, everybody, so here's our four snapper right here. I ended up uh, just throwing one back. I didn't, he was still alive, and I got the limit, but I didn't need uh, four of them, uh, or five of them for that matter. One of them I'm just gonna fillet up and leave it for uh, tomorrow, but the other three I'm gonna make some fish tacos with them. And they are like, I mean, that's my hand here, and I'm, I'm a pretty big person, so they're actually pretty big. You know, this one here is about 15, 15 inches, um, you know, and then this one's a foot long. So it's, um, they're really good sizes. They're gonna be fantastic for what we want. So let's go ahead and uh, start cleaning them up and uh, getting these ready for our uh, fish tacos. All right, so we're gonna move these to the side. We're gonna get this thing started, shall we? So I just kind of like, like any other, when you're cleaning fish, um, I wasn't gonna talk about how I do it. I just kind of go um, underneath the spine here and then uh, right through the tail. You wanna get as much meat as possible. You can see right here, you can hear that bone. And you just wanna get as much meat off as possible. Some people like to cut off um, and don't like that belly meat. Um, I actually like it. Um, it's kind of bony and, and so if you get the bones out, it's actually a really flavorful piece of meat. But you can see here, we've already got one side done. And yeah, it did a pretty good job at it. So I'm gonna get this one out of the way as well. Just underneath the skin, right? Get rid of the skin. And then this has some bones right here. A lot of people like to cut this part off, but I actually like this part here. It's, uh, it's really flavorful. The bones come up to here, so um, just cut right through here where the bones are. All right, that's pretty much where they are here, straight down here. And um, you got yourself a filet. Voila, all done, no bones. Give it a nice little rinse and there we have it. There's one filet done. A few more to go. Same thing, get as much of that meat off that you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, when they're not really, really big fish, you know, you want to get as much meat as possible. So cutting on that bone is uh, pretty important. You can see we did a pretty good job at getting rid of that. What do you do with the carcasses? Well, that is up to you. Um, many times I, I just throw them away, but I do save some if I want to go get, um, you know, if I want to use it for a uh, you know, for bait or for chum or for even catching crabs. And that's a really good uh, carcass to use because they'll come approach it, they'll eat it, and then you can just, you know, pick them up right there. You don't have to be hunting them down. They'll kind of come to what's available to them, right? So you make it simple, find those, those uh, sandy and grassy flats and uh, just put it on in there, drop it on down. And you're gonna see some blue crab come off it if you want to, you know, get some crab for a tarpon, you know, um, or even permit. Then that's how. That's a really good uh, carcass to use instead of just throwing it away. But if you're not gonna use it, um, if you're not gonna use it, you know, bre uh, break it down, use it for chum or for, you know, in a sense, its own bait. Then um, you could just throw it away, discard it like you would anything else. Uh, important fact, you don't want to cut into any of that. Be careful when you're cutting through, especially if you're using a sharp belay knife. You don't want to accidentally cut into the stomach itself where the intestines are, because again, we're not removing intestines. We're just cutting fillets off and throwing the rest of the fish in. Um, the only reason why you ever want to remove intestines is you're going to cut that, cook that fish whole. 
And the reason why is you just don't want to cut into it uh, because that's where, you know, there's going to be anything nasty. It's the digest digestive system. You don't want to cut into that belly and then get any of that on your knife and then get it on your clean meat. So just be careful when you're filleting your fish that you don't cut into it. I mean, is it gonna be a big deal if you do? I don't know, you know? I mean, I, it sure happened to me, um, especially, you know, in the, in the first part of when I was learning how to fillet these fi any fish, you know, it happened to me often. And uh, I mean, I never got sick that I know of, but it's definitely not something, if you could avoid it, take your time when you're cutting and you're filleting, especially if you're not, uh, if you don't fillet often, you know, and just be careful because you really don't want to cut into that, especially, you know, depending on the fish. Mango snappers, you know, seems to be all right, but, um, you know, you don't want to cut into the into something and then p potentially get sick. It's not the idea, right? Kind of use your fingers again. Feel around those bones. Work your way through it. Cut it out, and voila. You got yourself a boneless fillet. I like to rinse my cutting board off in between every two or three. Just because it can get pretty messy. Right through, just like that. Fantastic. All right, everybody, so now that we've got them filleted and ready to rock, um, now it's time to get them prepared to, for the seasonings, right? So what I do is I get a Ziploc bag, a gallon bag, and I just put them all in there. Um, you can cook them right away. I like to leave them in a bag for an hour or two to uh, let them absorb the flavors, especially when doing fish tacos, because it comes out really good that way. Um, and so for the for what we're using, we're using a um, little bit of sesame oil, a little bit of soy sauce, some sweet chili, uh, sweet chili sauce. Um, I like this one a lot, it tastes really good. Some Old Bay Spice seasoning, salt and pepper, and that's really it. So for the sesame oil, it's very strong, so you just wanna put a little bit, um, just enough to kinda coat it. Um, you don't wanna put a whole lot in there, right? Salt and pepper to your liking. You know, I'm not gonna tell you a quarter a teaspoon of this or that, right? Because everybody likes, I love a lot of pepper. Pepper's really, really good. Um, and again, you could, once it's already absorbed the seasoning, when you get it out, you could always salt, you could always add more salt and pepper to it, right? But I like pepper, it gives it a good flavor, so I add, a, you know, a little bit of it. Salt, not a whole lot of salt. Um, you don't really want that much salt. Soy sauce, the same thing like that sesame oil, just enough to coat it. That's really it. Um, some Old Bay Spice. Just get it on in there. It looks like I'm putting a lot, but this stuff comes out in a little, a little at a time. Not a whole lot comes out of it. And then, my favorite, give it a good shake, sweet chili sauce. This is the one. Um, be as generous as you like, right? Just kind of put almost half the bottom on it, but that's really it. And then you want to get it in there really good. All right, close it down. And then we're going to give it a good shake. All right, mix it all in there really good. Make sure it all gets mixed in well. We want it all to taste the same, right? All the bites, at least for fish, you want it to have the same flavor. Um, we want it to taste really good. So mix it up really good, just like that. And then, seal it on down and put it in your refrigerator. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. I'm gonna take a shower, go get the kids from school, pick up my wife from work, and we'll catch you in a little bit. Welcome back.
back. Um, we've had some time to let our snapper sit in the seasoning. And I'm gonna go over the ingredients we're gonna be using real quick. So our recipe for today is actually gonna be a mango mangrove fish burrito. Right, I wanna do fish tacos, except um, yeah, there was no way to do, I, didn't, I, I forgot to buy the little tortillas. So um, we're gonna do fish burritos, but we're still gonna call it fish tacos because you go either way and it sounds better. So let's get this thing started. Um, what we're using for today um, is actually, we're gonna be using uh, one white onion, a radish, some green onion, um, avocado to do our guacamole, a tomato, lemon, cucumber, of course a mango, um, some cilantro, some garlic, corn, and a spring mix. And of course, the main event, the mango snapper. So let's cut it all up and let's get this thing going. So a really good best practice is while you're prepping up your prep, um, go ahead and start heating up your pan. You know, mango snapper cooks pretty quickly. We're not gonna be frying it. We're actually gonna be like pan searing it, a little bit of butter um, with some garlic and um, the green onion and the onion. So while you're prepping everything, just heat up your pan, right? Heat it up really good. And um, I just put maybe like a quarter of a block of butter and I just put half of a quarter of a stick of butter is the best way to say it. So you could use less than that if you have a different type of, um, you know, oil that you like to use. You can use, uh, you know, you can use olive oil if you like. I just like to use the butter because it gives it the, the mango snapper a really good flavor. Um, and plus we're gonna be putting some mango in there as well. We're not gonna be putting a coal, we're actually gonna heat it up in there as well. So it gives it a good flavor, it brings it all together, just, you know, makes it better. So I already cut up some tomatoes. We're gonna go ahead and cut up our uh, cucumbers. We can cut these in little uh, uh, cubes, squares, however you like to call them. Or you can, you know, you can julienne them if you like and put them a long way. Um, but I'm not technically gonna be doing that. I'm actually just gonna just cut them up in little squares and just add them in at the end. Gives it a nice little crunch. It's gonna be thrown in at the end for literally maybe 30 seconds, right? Because we don't want it to, uh, we don't want it to, uh, to cook too much. We just want to kind of coat it in the pan, let it get the flavors, and then it'll keep its crunch, but it'll still be, it'll give it a good flavor, keep its crunch and not be cold, right? And you just want to prep your onions, right? Because you're going to want to throw those in the saute pan as well. Um, in this case, same thing, I'm going to do like a, just a quick chop. To break it down a little bit and then we're gonna add it in there let them caramelize a little bit before we add um, the garlic and before we actually add the mango snapper so you can see butter's cooked down pretty good all right so here we're gonna go ahead and turn the heat up a little bit more we're actually gonna add the onions in first and that we're gonna let it cook in there for some time let it caramelize but I don't have it on high heat I have the, the heat on medium right now because um, this mango snapper cooks very quickly. Very, very quickly, literally a few minutes and it's done. So we're gonna let this cook down. While it's cooking down, I'm actually gonna prepare the guacamole. All right, cool, so now we can actually prepare the guacamole. A guacamole is not gonna be like a true Mexican authentic guacamole, right? It's gonna be a really good guac that I'm gonna make. So here, best way to do it, just take a spoon, you cut around here just like this, and there you go, there's one, same thing here. Best way to do it. Two, we're gonna be mashing up anyway, so you can get out any, way, any other way you like too. But I'm used to doing it this way, so this is the way we're doing it. Here. That's done. Make sure there's no pits left in there because it could be a little bit bitter. Not pits, excuse me, a little weird, where it leaves a kind of like a little bitter flavor if you get it in the food. That's not what you want. Um, okay, so we're going to get it in here. We're going to cut our lemon. And 
into uh, quarters, just like that. Drop some lemon in there. This is how I do it. If you have a different way, please. You are more than welcome to do it. And I'm going to use a pilon on it. So as you see, it's not authentic, authentic, because a pilon is actually something we use in Puerto Rico to do mofongo. It's a traditional plate that we do where you take plantains, you fry it up, you mash them, refry them, you turn them into little tiny tostones. Um, which comes out really good. So that's why I said it's not going to be a real authentic one. Um, add a little bit of cilantro to it. Again, this is my style of doing it. Uh, you definitely are can do any way you like to do it. I just like cilantro. So on everything. Um, so I'm going to add it in there. And it gives it a good flavor. Like Cilantro is really good. All right, now that's mashed up pretty good. I'm gonna pull it out. All right, cool. So I'm gonna get it all out of here. Nice block here. And the cool thing when you're cooking you can taste everything. We had to add some salt and pepper to that. But this wok is not going to take any salt and pepper because we're going to have salt and pepper in our mango snapper and we're going to add it as we're sauteing down our our vegetables. So we and so we don't really want to add too much salt to it. So the buck won't really like that, no salt. Actually a little bit of pepper. Just to give it a good flavor. A little kick to it. And now that it's all done, our onion is caramelized, so you guys can see here. Nice and caramelized. All right, we got the onions out. Now while we prep our mangrove, we're actually our mango, we're actually gonna cook down our snapper now. So here, I'm gonna add some garlic to your pot. Nice and hot and remove. Bring the heat down. And then now, now we add our snapper that's been seasoned and been absorbing all these amazing flavors for five hours now. And again, this cooks really quickly. You want to bring the heat down to low. It's already hot enough. Hoping to make enough space here for all of them. That's uh, relevant to the size of pot, right? And obviously, depending how many fish you're cooking, we're cooking a bunch of fillets here, so but it looks like there's going to be enough space for everything. Sure is. And of course, don't forget the extra sauce on top of it because it just tastes great. I want to go ahead and prepare our mango. Your mangoes, you want to make sure that they're ripe. So in your supermarket, if you find any, you know that they're ripe when you push them. They're soft, uh, but not too soft. Um, so you want them to be just right. This one wasn't perfect, but it was the best one out of all of them. So I'm not going to complain. It could be a little bit soft, a little more juicier, but um, a little more juicier, but we're definitely going to be cooking it down. So it's not going to um, have a big effect or a big change, right? As if we were doing a mango chutney chicken or whatnot. So we're going to cut, we're going to cut it off here. Try not to cut on that pit, because that's also bitter too. You don't want pit pieces in your uh, in your food. Pretty bitter. What we like to do um, in the Caribbean, I'm sure a lot of you guys do it too, is once it's already done, and you cut out all the pieces that you want off, you actually take the pit, 
and you eat around it's really good really yummy but that's just what we do uh, so the same thing you take these down you're gonna chop them up you know in uh, smaller pieces as well because you want this to cook quickly and fast right because this is right after you're gonna flash cook this right after that mangrove snapper is done this is gonna be the last piece you put on top um, obviously the cilantro will be the last last of it and the radishes but this is gonna be the last pieces you put on top so you want to cut them up as little as possible in squares um, so you could uh, sort of cook quickly and effectively but the trick to this is you actually want to add uh, a little bit of brown sugar to it right or um, if you don't have any brown sugar, you want to use some brown sugar, right? Uh, just because it cooks just a little bit because it cooks it down quick um, Caramelizes as well, and it gives it a really good sweet flavor. Remember we had that sweet chili uh, sauce on it So this sweet mango sauce is gonna even make it even tastier So so I've had this on low For about three minutes now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna remove the top and I'm gonna fire this thing on high now Or not high excuse me on medium. It's gonna cook it down quicker and reduce that saw's down, so you're gonna take that the top off. It was on low, remember you had it low for three, three and a half minutes, take the top off, bring it up to medium, medium high. Let all that juice evaporate, really just cook off, and then you'll have a really good um, cooked mango snapper. But you don't wanna overcook it, so you wanna make do it as quickly as possible. And while this is cooking, you're gonna have your pan here, and this is where you're gonna cook, cook down your mango so what we're gonna do we're gonna this we're gonna put it on um, medium high as well we're gonna add a little bit of butter we're gonna add some butter and um, some brown sugar lucky for us my wife likes to drink her coffee with brown sugar so there's never a shortage of brown sugar in the house so how much brown sugar well that's relevant to what you're making right if you're cooking four snappers like me then I'm actually gonna be using five um, tablespoons but if you're only cooking down one mango snapper just bring it down instead of um, five tablespoons just use one so one tablespoon per fish right that's what you want to do or five tablespoons for whole mango if you're gonna do half a mango just do two and a half really one tablespoon one and a half tablespoons per fish um, you're going to cook your sugar and your butter down with your mango snapper um, so first the butter for about a minute then your sugars 45 seconds to another minute, and then your mango in there for about two minutes. Everything on high, you're gonna continue continuously stir. You see how the fish is cooking off here? It's starting to, the liquid's starting to cook down. Now this fish is taking off the heat, it's done. Turn it off, the rest of that liquid will cook off, um, but you don't wanna overcook your mango, so just take it off the heat, that's ready to go. Now we've got our mango chutney. I like to use a high heat rubber spatula. If you don't have this, you can use anything else. Just don't want to scrape your pots and pans, right? Um, if, so you don't really want to use any metal if you don't have to. So you can see how it just starts to caramelize with that brown sugar and that butter just mixes really good. If you wanted to do a really, really saucy chutney, you could add more brown sugar to it. In this particular case, we don't want to make it too saucy. Um, we just want to make it flavorful. You can see how it starts to liquefy, just caramelize that brown sugar. That brown sugar is going to thicken up as we add more heat to it and continue to stir it. You let it sit and stir. So you want to get kind of a almost a syrupy consistency. As you can see here, it just starts to kind of work its way down. So it's got to thicken up a little bit more than that. Let it heat up. All right, when you get it to almost a boil and you got that syrupy consistency like this, that's when you know it's ready to rock. This is when you add your cucumbers, right? You remember that garlic and onion that we uh, sauteed down? You're gonna add that in as well. Give it a good stir. Give it a good stir. You want everything to get coated real nice. Again, you want to keep that crunching, a little bit of crunchiness. I mean, the heat's gonna, it's a vegetable, or excuse me, it's a fruit, so it's gonna 
it's going to heat up and get a little softer, but just a little bit of that consistency. And that's it. We're all done. This is done. Take it off the heat. Last but not least, you want to heat up your wrap. So originally we wanted to do tacos, right? So you could do these same tortillas like this, just a small one for tacos, but just take a tortilla, right? Take some salt, add it to your pan. Let the pan heat up. Tortilla goes inside of it. You could use a bigger pan, but it's nice and hot. It's okay. And just kind of give it some turns, right? And when it's nice and hot, take it off. You just want it nice and warm. Um, you don't want it like hard and crunchy, right? You want it nice and warm. Um, and then just, just keep flipping around. The salt's nice. It gives it a nice little flavor to it. You don't have to put salt in your pan if you don't want to. I like to. It's just the way I've always done it. Um, but that's how we're doing it now. Once this is done, I'm gonna assemble all together. You can see what it looks like. While that's cooking down, the last thing you wanna prepare is your radishes, right? So you just wanna thin slice them. This you're not cooking now. This has a really good flavor to it. So um, almost like a little spicy flavor to it. So you wanna leave it raw just the way it is, just like that, right? If that's too much, you can, just, you can take it and half them if you like. Um, plus it renders a little bit more when you half them. You wanna make more just like that and you're all set. And your green onions. So these, just cut off the root here, just like that. I would you can cut them in. A, since I don't, I'm not using my bigger cutting board right now. It's a little dirty from um, everything else. You take them in half, cut them, and then. And that's it. And these you eat them raw as well. They're really good raw. Uh, you could cook them down in other dishes, but in this particular dish, I just like to put it right on top. Um, gives it a really good flavor, just like that. Our tortillas are done. Everything is complete. And now it's time to put it all together. First things first, I actually like to take a little bit of sour cream. If you don't like sour cream, skip this part. And I just like to coat uh, my tortilla, right? Because it kind of holds everything together. It gives it a nice little flavor. Not all the way on the edges around because you're going to need some of that edge to turn and fold, um, to fold and tuck. So you just want to get a nice, good consistency right in the middle of it. And the next thing I do is a, is a bed of lettuce. In this case, we're using spring mix, right? Just like that. A little bit on each one. I'm going to add the snapper. And you can see just how beautiful this snapper is. I mean, just perfectly, perfectly caramelized um, with that sweet chili sauce. And it's just gonna be incredibly amazing. So a good portion for everyone, right? Don't be scared. There's plenty of snapper in the ocean. So if you need more, just go back out and get some. But don't be scared to serve yourself some snapper. You know, in this case, we're putting some big servings in these, in these um, burritos here. The next thing that goes on here is our mango cucumber chutney that we made. So this here, just want to take enough on top, right? Because it's going to be sweet because of that um, brown sugar. But it's also going to have that garlic and that onion in it. So it's going to give it a really good flavor. Just like that. And then from here... Here's where you want to add some fresh cilantro. And then you could add your green onions, your radishes. Your corn. And last but not least, your tomatoes and your guacamole. This is a serious burrito, folks. Same thing with the taco. If you were to, if you had, if you did in a taco, just less portions on it, right? It's relative to the tortilla that you're using. That guac came out looking pretty good, if you ask me. Also. We're gonna use a uh, Sargento aged cheddar cheese, 18 months. I don't know about all that, if it was really aged 18 months, but it tastes amazing. So we're gonna use some of this. 
And now is the moment of truth time. Can we fold these bad boys? And voila, we got ourselves one good looking burrito. That's a serious burrito there, folks. All that's left, guys, is to try your amazing burrito. It tastes fantastic. That sweet chili uh, sauce with that mango chutney just amazing garlic gives it a really good flavor the onions all right on and the radish gives that perfect crunchiness right so it just brings everything together this thing tastes amazing guys we're gonna wrap up the video i hope you guys enjoyed it mango mangrove tacos in this case mango mangrove burritos um i'll catch you guys on the next one enjoy your catch eat it have fun peace